When you watch movies from different eras, you start to notice the templates that recur through the years. You find that there are lots of movies that seem very different on the surface, but strangely have similar DNA. For example, the Muppet movie is beat for beat The Wizard of Oz. Hero sings a song about a rainbow, goes off on a road trip, picks up friends along the way, defeats the villain, and meets a powerful wizard who grants all of their wishes. In this video, we're going to show how a Marvel movie and a 1960s studio comedy have more in common than you'd think. It's Mr. Limpet, the first Avenger, in this episode of Strangely Similar. Welcome to Atomic Abe's newest series where we look at some media that seems oddly similar. Be sure to check out our recent entry where we wondered if John Carpenter's The Thing is a rehash of the Bad News Bears. The similarities are shocking. This new video was suggested by Atomic Abe fan Jesse Farrell. His premise? Captain America, The First Avenger, and 1964's The Incredible Mr. Limpet are pretty much the same movie. Stay with me here. They're both the story of a meek army reject from Brooklyn who undergoes a physical transformation that turns him into a Nazi-bashing super soldier, in a way. In both movies, we start with a present-day framing device. Both show military personnel uncovering some of the buried evidence of the hero's feats, which we then see unfold in flashback. Steve Rogers is a scrawny, perpetually bullied kid whose only dream is to fight Nazis. There are men laying down their lives. I got no right to do any less than them. But who gets rejected at every turn. Henry Limpet, played by Don Knotts, is a lovably dorky henpecked accountant whose only dream is to be a fish. I wish. I wish I were a fish. He also wants to fight the Nazis, but mostly just to impress his wife. Of course, he also gets rejected. They're also both from Brooklyn. And don't worry, if you forget, the movies will remind you. Henry Limpet from Brooklyn. 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 Okay. Brooklyn. 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 I'm just a kid from Brooklyn. They both have best friends who do get a chance to ship out. Bucky Barnes for Steve Rogers and George Stickle for Henry Limpet. After getting rejected, they both head to an outdoor amusement park. Steve goes to the Stark Expo and Henry goes to Coney Island. And it's here that they each meet their destiny. Steve meets Abraham Erskine, the scientist heading up a top secret super soldier serum program. Erskine sees Steve as the perfect candidate for the program, and before long he beefs him up into the hunky, non-digitally emaciated Chris Evans we all know and love. You look taller. Henry's transformation is simpler. He falls into the water and just turns into a fish, with the trademark Don Knotts glasses, of course. The hero's confidence is restored by his new form, which helps him win over his love interest. Steve's is Agent Peggy Carter, and Henry's is the conveniently named Ladyfish, the horniest ladyfish of all time. Shall we go? Go? Go where? Why, to the spawning grounds. That part is important because Steve suspects Peggy of fondueing with Howard Stark, while Henry's wife is heavily implied to be cheating on him with George. You and Bessie would sit up till all hours playing poker while I read myself to sleep? Both characters also possess superpowers in their new forms. Captain America's strength and shield, and Henry's whale-busting thrum. Oh! <laughs> Because of their superpowers, they both become secret weapons in the allied fight against the Nazis. And against Hydra, in Cap's case. There's another interesting parallel here between Don Knotts and Chris Evans, who have more in common than you might think. Up until these movies, both were best known for playing sidekicks. Knotts was Deputy Barney Fife to Sheriff Andy Taylor, and Evans was the Human Torch to Mr. Fantastic Reed Richards. So, like their characters, they were each finally getting their moment in the spotlight. It's also worth mentioning that both of these movies were made with the collaboration of the Department of Defense. Not that surprising when you consider both movies are about guys who become alpha males by joining the military. Anyway, back to the plots. The heroes are met with skepticism from their superiors. A fish! And from cantankerous side characters who like to take them down a peg. Steve has Tommy Lee Jones in the grumpy old guy phoning it in role, and Henry has a crab sidekick called Krusty, voiced by the great Paul Frees. Why, you lot 
mouth, son of a bellerin' barracuda. Then the heroes score some important victories against the Nazis. Captain America liberates a POW camp, saving Bucky in the process. They assemble a ragtag group of Nazi fighters and go on a series of missions for the Allied cause. Meanwhile, Henry uses his whale-busting thrum to locate German U-boats for the American Navy. Before long, the hero's deeds make headlines back home, and each hero gets his own patriotic theme song. Then, the villains respond by developing their own secret weapon. Hugo Weaving's Johann Schmidt, aka Red Skull, uses the same technology as Cap to create weapons of mass destruction. Likewise, the Germans and Mr. Limpet come up with a torpedo specifically designed to seek out Henry's noise. In both cases, the bad guy's own technology is their ultimate downfall. Isn't it ironic? Red Skull is sucked through a portal to space after handling the Tesseract. And the Nazi U-boats are blown up by their own torpedoes after Henry leads them away from the American convoy. Steve and Henry both lead their forces to victory, but the victory comes at a cost. They both make tearful goodbyes to their loved ones before disappearing into the ocean forever. Or not. Cap wakes up 70 years later and is beckoned into the MCU by Nick Fury. The Incredible Mr. Limpet ends with the Navy again making contact with Henry about some strange porpoise activity. The movies end there, but the connections continue. Captain America the First Avenger began development in 1997, right around the same time Jim Carrey was attempting to remake Mr. Limpet. Of course, the Mr. Limpet remake never happened, which is a good thing based on this truly horrifying test footage. <laughs> Still, both movies kicked around in development hell for years, with Richard Linkletter even being attached to direct Mr. Limpet before the project finally fell apart. Could it be that Warner Brothers and Marvel were intimidated by the thought of putting out such similar movies around the same time? Would there have been an extended cinematic universe based on 1960s live-action animation movies if Mr. Limpet had been remade? We all know Captain America joined the Avengers, so maybe Mr. Limpet could have teamed up with the heroes from other 60s animal movies. Is Henry Limpet behind the recent wave of coordinated orca attacks on boats? You can discuss all these questions and more in the comment section, and be sure to like and subscribe to the Atomic Abe YouTube channel for more commentary like this, including a look at all the times sitcoms did a Shakespeare episode. This 